You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another anime review. Now, if you remember a while back, I did review Shin Chan, also known as Crayon Shin Chan, on the channel. And if you've been keeping up with my DVD collection updates, you know that I do currently have access to some bootlegs of some of the Shin Chan movies. None of the Shin Chan movies have had a US release, but there are Malaysian bootlegs of a few of them. Shin Chan has 28 movies. I've only been able to come across three of them, uh, so today we'll be talking about those three movies, which is why this is Volume 1 of the Shin-Chan Movie Reviews. Now, the movies that we'll be reviewing today are movies 24, 26, and 27, released in 2016, 2018, and 2019, respectively. Uh, those movies are... Fast Asleep, Great Assault on the Dreamy World. We'll just call that Fast Asleep for short. Then there's Bakumori, Kung Fu Boys, Ramen Tyran. We'll just call it Kung Fu Boys for short. And finally, there's Honeymoon Hurricane, The Lost Hiroshi. And we'll just refer to that as Honeymoon Hurricane for short. I watched these movies in that order completely, completely from coincidence because I knew that... Kung Fu Boys came right before Honeymoon Hurricane because the number was on the case of the DVDs I watched. But with uh, Fast Asleep, there was no number on it, so I just got lucky watching that before the other two. So we'll start with Fast Asleep, Great Assault on the Dreamy World, which is a story of a new ex of a new exchange student moving to Casca Bay. And when she moves to town, everyone in town starts having these strange dreams. Well, as it turns out, this new exchange student has this weird disorder where she, like, can't dream. Or when she does, it's, like, horrible and, like, she's haunted by these images of her mother. Because, as it's later revealed, her mother was in a horrible lab accident, which she blames herself for, and that lab accident caused her to have these dreams. Well, her father is a scientist and created this machine to harvest the happy dreams of everyone else in town. So that's why everyone starts having these weird shared dreams. And essentially they have to battle some of the dream monsters to help the new exchange student and ultimately help her resolve her problems. I'm not going to spoil exactly how it ends, but it's a very interesting movie and uh, it's a very fun one too. Uh, lots of weird surrealist stuff because it takes place in a dream world, so they could get away with a lot more you know, weird creative stuff than they could in the normal show. Uh, but it's a fun little movie. And it's very creative. Uh, but now, let's move on to Kung Fu Boys. So, Kung Fu Boys is about this evil ramen shop owner who owns this shop called Black Panda Ramen that's taking over all of the restaurants in Chinatown in Casca Bay. Well, Masao has been training with, with this Kung Fu master to learn something called the Soft and Bouncy Fist. And the other members of the Casca Bay Defense Force, that being Shin and his friends, I don't remember if the Casca Bay Defense Force was a thing in the anime. I don't think it made it into the Americanization if it was, but it is a thing that's mentioned in at least the first two of these movies. Well, turns out Shin's a natural at the soft and bouncy fists, so they all begin training with the master, and Shin begins mastering it fairly quickly. There's a young girl named Yulan, who's a teen, who's been training with the master for a long time as well. And uh, as the movie goes on, they're also trying to discover this secret technique that can be used to defeat their enemy. The movie takes a few twists and turns. Uh, the final act is not something I saw coming at all, so I think they did a very good job with that. Again, I won't spoil it here. Uh, but I would actually say, out of these three movies, Kung Fu Boys is probably my favorite. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to Honeymoon Hurricane. In Honeymoon Hurricane, Hiro and Mitzi have never gone on a honeymoon. So Shin's parents decide, we're going to go on a honeymoon to Australia. Uh, and they get permission to bring their kids along and everything. And they go to Australia to spend some time together and have a honeymoon, which will have what they call love, love, fire. There's a few different misunderstandings, and of course there's some strife, and uh, Mitzi and Hiro get in a fight. And Hiro ultimately gets kidnapped by this tribe of masked people who live in the jungle named the common tribe. And if you don't know, common literally just means masked. So the movie becomes a journey where the Nahara family has to try and rescue Hiro. This one also has quite a few references to Indiana Jones because it has a bunch of treasure hunters and stuff in it. Uh, and Shin's outfit is directly a parody of Indiana Jones. He even has the whip and everything. But yeah, without spoiling too much, that's about it for the plot. So these three movies are all pretty fun. Uh, something I have noticed that differentiates this from the anime TV series is that these movies are a lot more action-packed, which tends to be the case with these movies when you take them and make movies out of sl slice-of-life comedies like Shin-Chan. For instance, the Dr. Slump movies did the same thing. So much like the Dr. Slump movies, these movies are a lot more action-packed and plot-heavy than the show proper. That's not to say that the show didn't have some action and 
action and plot to it, but it very rarely did. Uh, and in fact, the show itself had very short segments that were like 10 minutes at most. To see a feature-length thing carried out, obviously, they had to prob they had to get a lot more creative and, you know, action-packed to make it go on. As I said before, I think out of these movies, my favorite was Kung Fu Boys. I would say a close second would be ha uh, Honeymoon Hurricane, uh, and then followed by uh, Fast Asleep, Assault on the Dream World. Uh, I think that Fast Asleep is great and all. I just think that the the, the second and third movies that, I, that I'm talking about here today uh, were much more entertaining and much more focused on the main characters rather than a side character. Because the main focus of Fast Asleep was the new transfer student. And granted, she was a good enough character as it was. But Kung Fu Boys and Honeymoon Hurricane had a lot more focus on Shin. Uh, and uh, Kung Fu Boys specifically had a lot of focus on Shin's friends as well. And then Honeymoon Hurricane had a lot of good focus and development on the Nahara family as a whole. So I think because they focused more on the main characters, that's probably why I liked them a little bit more. That's not to say that Fast Asleep didn't have focus on the main characters, because it certainly did. Uh, but I ultimately just think that the plot to the second and third movie that I'm talking about here today are better. Uh, but these movies had plenty of the same kind of sense of humor you'd get with Shin Chan. Uh, but they also had some drama, some action, and, uh, plenty of plot that the show normally doesn't. And, uh, this is a very mild spoiler for Kung Fu Boys, but I think it's worth mentioning because it's really funny. And I kind of saw it coming as soon as it was building up to it. Uh, but there's like nine levels you have to master of the soft bouncy fist before you learn the ultimate technique. And the ninth level is literally Shin's ass dance that he always does. Uh, so he was obviously a natural at that. So I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, these movies were pretty enjoyable. If you like Shin Chan, I would recommend checking them out. They're plenty entertaining. Uh, but anyway, this has been Fugitive Red Eye, and uh, you have yourself a good one. Toodles.